This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection and service. Hello everyone, I'm Dimitri with Hurricanux and when we were first approached by Stinky to review this uh, Stinky board, we at Hurricanux were a little skeptical and honestly hesitant uh, accepting anything from a company with this name. Seriously. It is one of those names that is what inducing, but after we stinked it over, got all of the laughs out of our system, it was time to take Stinky for real. But before the review, we're giving away two Stinky boards to two lucky gamers who want it the most and can utilize the board to its full potential. So leave a comment down below of what games you would use this with and what type of key bindings you would set uh, with a comment below and we would choose two winners. So on the review floor today we have their Stinky Video Gaming Footboard. It's a tool designed to add extra functionality for your games by utilizing your feet uh, with a $100 price that is a little steep. So let's start with the packaging inside a well protected and uh, came broken box. You receive three sets of various resistant springs that are color coded for a total of four blue springs that are soft, four green ones that are medium, two red ones uh, with the highest resistance and uh, optional yellow springs for super soft effect. Lastly, an Allen key that is used to replace the springs is included, uh, a 2 meter micro USB cable and a stinky sticker. The foot control itself is built well, it is designed to take some abuse, first because you'll be stomping on it in the heat of battle, and instead of smashing your keyboard if you've been humiliated, you might channel that energy into the footboard instead, if you encounter more humiliation. The aluminum plate on the top, uh, the hard plastic outer shell and the steel internals all reinforce our confidence in the build quality department. Multiple rubber feet stabilize the board regardless of how much pressure and from which direction it's applied. And I love the lock and tunnel for the USB cable that you can replace over time and it will protect the main connector joint from uh, long term tension. Size wise I think it's a moderate fit for your feet. Any smaller and you might encounter unwanted presses on any of the keys and any bigger would make single foot operation more difficult. There are two red LEDs on the top, they only light up for registration of the two corresponding switches. I found the stinky text uh, helpful to determine correct orientation of the board as it can be used horizontally and vertically. So the premise behind this product is there are four MX Cherry blue switches inside the board, one on each side, that can be mapped to anything from your keyboard, thus if used correctly can complement your gameplay greatly. Stinky emphasizes that the footboard is designed to accompany your mouse and keyboard and not really replace it. Once you place your foot on the top, it supports it without unwanted presses in either direction and applying a bit of pressure will tilt the main cover and activate a corresponding switch. Generally, the travel is smooth and the bounce back is fast enough so you can perform multiple presses uh, one after another without issues. And this is where you can customize the feel of each direction with tension springs. This user flexibility is very much appreciated and important based on your personal usage and how much pressure you are comfortable with applying. For example, I put the red spring for the heel switch because I wanted to avoid it being registered if I rest my foot off center and closer to the bottom. And I also replaced the top uh, switch to the lightest spring so I don't have to apply a lot of force to activate it. One thing to keep in mind is how low the entire construction is when the switch is activated. The top cover practically meets the floor at this point and this could introduce compatibility issues with thick carpets. So after setting up the software for my style, it's pretty basic. You select the desired switch, choose from the four actions that include normal, that register the keybind continuously while the board is pressed. Key down activates only a single actuation, even if you hold the board down. Next is pulse, the keybind, which is a set amount of clicks per second, and each switch can be disabled as well. The only downside here, we have no macro recordings with the software, but if your keyboard supports macro recordings, you can remap those macros to the same keyboard. Also, they have not still added mouse support, so you can only add keyboard bindings to this board. 
And plus, multiple profiles can be created that can auto-launch with an executable. So I tried using this uh, with Adobe Audition and my Adobe CC package to edit. Didn't exactly work, but it still auto-launched that profile that I've created for my editing suite, while it can also do the same thing for all your games. And once I had all that set up, it was time to take Stinky for a spin. So it is recommended to start with only one switch for your game time, this way you get comfortable with the board and remember to use it. The first thing that came to my mind is remapping the voice talk function in most games, as I don't want to distract my already busy WASD zone and this worked beautifully. Having this function not under any finger on the mouse or keyboard but under my heel, it's a unique way to bypass some awkward to reach keyboard keys. Then I wanted to get more comfortable when using the entire board, so my FPS profile looked like this, with the crouch and prone remapped, along with left alt that I used for voice and Y for team chatter for CSGO for example. Uh, having those functions keys remapped made my WASD zone completely independent, as I could perform my most common actions with the footboard instead, and it didn't feel weird at all. After some time it became more natural to actually use the board and release some tension from my left hand. This is one of those gaming products that may actually never be used by the pros because they're already good at what they do, but my gaming experience actually you know, went to a different level as I get to experience my keyboard functions a different way as I could remap certain things that I hate on the keyboard um, onto the stinky board and that way improve my efficiency and give me a little bit better gaming experience. It is a cool item to try out and I actually found myself coming back to it once uh, not using it for a couple of gaming sessions, but it is $100 for four extra additional functions. So the value there is a bit stinky in that sense. Also, you cannot register two keys at the same time and therefore realistically it can never replace WASD zone, uh, but it's still a really cool product to complement your keyboard and mouse. It is a well-built product and it's functional and it's clearly designed for gamers who want to experiment with uh, moving some key bindings around and uh, you, for example, can remap some of the things that you really don't like on the keyboard onto the stinky board. I had fun with it and it will definitely live under my desk for a little longer. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you think of the stinky food controller and how would you use it with a comment below for a chance to win one. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.